back Pastor Timothy Lee is going to lead us in our Amen. Tonight, Lord, our prayer is a prayer of thanksgiving. Your word says, enter to his courts with thanksgiving, into his gates with praise. Tonight, we want to thank you for such a wonderful leadership group for our city. God, that leads this city with equity and excellence. God, that leads it with care and compassion. God, truly, whoever coined the phrase, you can escape in cave. Amen. And named it right. God, it's a tremendous community filled with tremendous opportunities. And God, tonight we're just thankful for a great city to live in, to raise our families in, to be blessed in, to meet folks that are uh, wonderful character, wonderful opportunity to serve one another. God, thank you for all the hundreds of people that make this city great and make it go into the future filled with all kinds of potential. God, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to begin this evening with a uh, retirement presentation. assistance coordinator, a position he held until his retirement. He received the 1996 Employee of the Year Award for Administration and Development Services Departments. For three decades, he was directly involved in or consulted on nearly every housing-related program and event in Southeast Missouri. He became a subject matter expert on all things housing and served as an invaluable resource for countless organizations, developers, and citizens. He is very adept at leveraging multiple resources, financial and non-financial, to maximize project outcomes. He served on numerous committees, including the Statewide Community Development Advisory Committee, having served as its president, and the Missouri Department of Economic Development Policy Committee, having served as its chairman. He also served on the Southeast Missouri Regional Planning Commission Board of Directors. In addition, he helped establish the Cape Area Family Resources <coughs> From home repair grants to housing tax credits to flood buyout programs, Steve was instrumental in helping the city and its partners improve the lives of countless citizens. His most notable accomplishments include community development block grants, six programs, 170 homes, one former building, the OK Police Headquarters, for a total value of $4,956,080. Emergency shelter, emergency emergency solution grants, 3,879,000 plus. Flood buyout, two different programs, $2,852,000. Neighborhood stabilization program grants, two programs, 11 homes, $806,000. The old St. Francis Hospital demolition, $725,000. Federal Home Loan Bank of Des Moines, Iowa, three programs, $531,000. Rental rehab grant, 10 homes, $158,000. Housing tax credits, 14 projects, two developers, $53,302. Girl, Missouri, $505,753. A total investment of $66,064,557. Now that's amazing. <laughs> Do they could call or stop by any time, they'd be greeted with a friendly welcome. 
He often conversed about what was going on in the community and shared his wisdom on many topics. Employees like Steve cannot be replaced. We wish him well on his retirement and will always remember all the years and the way you devoted yourself to the people of our city. Service to the Development Services Department, 1987 to 2021. Thank you, sir. You want to say anything? You're welcome. I just like to thank the City of Cape Girardeau for giving me the opportunity to do what I love to do. That's basically. <laughs> city management career came with its challenges. He started with the city in 2009, right after a pretty good recession. And he's ending his tenure in a pandemic, sort of, although we're coming out of it. But under his leadership, the city not only survived, but thrived in challenging times without the layoffs, service cuts or shutdowns that troubled communities all across our nation. He credits all the city's successes to the innovative and resilient people of the Cape Girardeau community and the city organization. But it's Scott Meyer, and we're celebrating with Scott Meyer his career and the community he has so faithfully served. Some of his 38 public service career highlights, not all of them with the city, but in public service is what matters. He supervised hundreds of projects for the Missouri Department of Transportation, including the $100 million bill in Mission Bridge. He oversaw construction and maintenance for Southeast Missouri State University, including the initiative to switch the campus from coal to natural gas. He served 12 years as our city chief, op chief operating officer, the longest serving city manager in our history. He instituted over 20 city improvement programs. They go on and on. The Neighborhood Development Initiative, Automated Sol Solid Waste, the New Sports Plex, Fire Station 4, Police Station, a lot of other building and renovation projects that, that are still going on. <coughs> he initiated partnerships with corporations such as the Casino, with Air Service, with Jury Southwest, Mid America Hotels, to facilitate private investment within our community, raising $100 million in that private investment and creating 1,000 jobs. That's a big deal. He modernized the 911 Emergency Assistance Program by including radio and operability in the new CAD dispatching system. They go on and on and on. <laughs> Stay here a long time. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's not over yet because we still have something to do later on this week. But we have this nice plaque to present to you that says, in appreciation and recognition over 12 years of loyal and faithful service to the city of Cape Girardeau. Presented by the city of Cape Girardeau on honor of the Toronto Scott A. Meyer from his service to city manager 2009 to 2021.
the staff that that just loves their city so much, and uh, and it comes out in in things getting better for citizens, and um, and that also doesn't happen if you don't have a council that has vision and direction and is positive about it, and that doesn't happen if you don't have citizens that engage and, and are willing to vote for tax initiatives and and to support uh, different programs and, and come out and be a part of that. So, you know, I just, and be a part of that and being kind of the in-between between council and staff. But uh, if you don't have all those components, nothing else happens. And, um, you know, I've been, I've, um, I'm a person of faith and, and, uh, and you know, through my, through my faith, I just, uh, believe that I was uh, had a calling to be here at this time, and uh, when it came to the end of that time, I felt like it's a time for somebody else to come and, and be a part of that. And I saw the mayor just earlier this afternoon. I'm so excited about about Dr. Haskin coming because he's going to have a whole other view of the city, and he's got a whole other breadth of experiences that he's going to bring to the city. And all those other components I talked about that makes me successful. Those are all still here. They're all great people, great leadership, great staff, great citizens. They just want Cape to be a great place to be and live and play. And we're so fortunate to have that. And so next 12 years, we're going to be twice as good as the last one. Look forward to it. Anybody else? Um, I also share the same sentiment 
uh, regarding Scott, stop being so much for service. Um, this is my first year, this has been our tough year as an incoming council member. So thank you for being that guiding light and that trusted source for information for me personally. Um, we'll talk about how we really feel about John Lewis. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but again, I can't, can't thank you enough personally for uh, your guidance uh, as a council member in this role. Um, and again, also congratulations to Steve. So just a welcome to your retirement. Um, and, I, and we don't always take the opportunity to congratulate members of our community when they move on to other roles. So I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Reverend Renita Green, who has accepted a new position at the University of Dayton, and acknowledge that her future absence from Cape Verde is going to be felt across the board. Um, she, her service to the city includes her work with the People's Church and the St. James a &E Parish, uh, where she and her volunteers have provided shelter for those in need, um, including provided homeless resources, warming centers, clothing, um, showers, and other necessities. Um, also, she's worked in community outreach, organized and conducted community crisis intervention meetings, which I've had the fortunate opportunity to attend. Um, and she's been an exceptional resource for our most vulnerable populations. Um, I also commend Renita for her commitment to the city. She is one to ask, she's the one that asks us the most difficult questions. So she engages us into talking about those difficult subjects that we normally wouldn't talk about. Um, so thank you, Renita, for that. Um, she's also provided an avenue of communication and a voice for those community members in need. And thank you again to Renita for her thankless efforts and making Cape Girardeau a better place to live for all people. And we will miss her. Anybody else? Yeah, I've got a couple things, Mayor. Um, I brought with me the project timeline uh, from Ernst & Young. Uh, so I'll send some copies out to you all about that, what's going to be going on. We had our first kickoff call with them last week. Um, and then this week we'll kind of get down, dig into the timeline. Uh, Stapleton and Charlie Burks and myself uh, will be handling that. Um, so that's good news, got a lot going on there. Uh, also, part of that uh, is the first 50K program. I sent you guys an email today about that. Um, uh, reach out to them for some specifics, but they've got their kickoff. They'll be having them in uh, probably in the next 30 to 45 days. Those uh, candidates will be in once they're final down, uh, um, pinpointed down to the final 10, I believe. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, and then the last thing, Scott, thank you. Uh, the last five years um, since I've been on the council, I've learned a lot from you, um, what to do, what not to do, uh, <laughs> uh, what not to say sometimes. Um, whenever I sat in, in your office the first day, I kind of looked around Cape and I said, well, Scott, the, there's only really two projects you haven't done yet, and that's the airport and city hall. And here we are today, and you know, really talk about having those pretty much done too with the help of Molly and the rest of the staff. But um, it's amazing what you've done, and you've left a legacy that's going to be hard to just for anyone else to reach. And, and um, I appreciate your all, all your leadership. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, uh, I want to reiterate what Dan said about the great race tomorrow evening. Uh, downtown, cars should be coming down Broadway between 5 and 515. And uh, about a minute apart, there are uh, also, we're going to be 150. Last I saw 120, but I still think there's going to be 150. Uh, Scott's retirement uh, reception is Osage Center, Thursday, 336. Uh, there's a little retirement reception for Julia. Friday evening at uh, top of March, 4.30, 6.30. And uh, I think you all received information about the July 4th festivities. Uh, the Bicentennial Mural that's been traveled all around the state of Missouri is gonna be revealed that evening or that afternoon in the Arena Building. And that's gonna be a, a big, big, big deal. Uh, 
Uh, there'll be uh, some more comments on the bicentennial celebration uh, inside the arena. Uh, then we'll go outside for normal events and and have uh, the uh, presentation of the Spirit of America Award. Uh, the Municipal Band will be there playing uh, music, and it's a neat, neat, neat way to get together. And then the fireworks show is after that. So let's hope for dry weather and everything comes off without a hitch. I uh, can't think of anything else. Uh, Scott, I can't, I can't say enough about uh, what you've done. It's helped lead me as the new mayor, uh, give you direction, and uh, we'll say a little more on Thursday now. Very good. Okay, Scott, so you can stay. Right. <clears throat> just a couple of items. I um, just want to direct to, to council if you uh, uh, plan on attending the 4th of July. Um, festivities, please let uh, Julia know so she can uh, get you your tickets. And uh, and then uh, also just uh, let me know, we just got word that uh, the Minnesota at 74 uh, access improvement uh, is uh, was approved for a cost share program uh, last week. So uh, that will help us to uh, get that project done. Good. If there's nothing else, We'll move into items for discussion. The first is appearances by advisory board applicants. Anybody here this evening? There she is, Jessica. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Good evening. I'm Jessica Hill, and um, I've had the opportunity to, to appear before you several times over the past few years in my role as director of the Safe House, including many times with Steve Williams. Uh, but this evening I'm here to talk about my interest in serving on the Cape Girardeau Public Library Board of Trustees. I've served on a variety of boards as I outlined in my application and I truly enjoy serving the community in this way. As the leader of a local nonprofit, I appreciate a board's responsibility for fiscal guidance and policy making. But what has drawn me to apply for the library board is simply my love of libraries, reading, and books. I credit my love of books to my parents, both of whom were public school English teachers and avid readers. Since getting my first library card in middle school, I've had a library card everywhere I've ever lived, from the massive St. Louis public library system to the smaller scale and Dare County Public Library in my hometown of Kirksville. Since moving to Cape Girardeau 12 years ago, my family and I have been patrons of our city's excellent public library. My kids have grown up participating in the children's program, and I taught my son Jacob and daughter Caitlin, who are now 17 and 14, how to read with the Read to Succeed books we checked out from the library when they were kindergartners. It's rare that a week goes by without a visit to the library for more books and music. My husband jokes that he's surprised there are still books left in the adult fiction section that I haven't read, and I tell him the nonfiction section is still waiting. <laughs> I would be very honored to serve the library as a member of its board of trustees, and I appreciate your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? The library board. If not, we will move on to the planning and zoning report. Mr. Green, Alice. Great, thanks for having me. Uh, the summary of the June the 9th, 2021 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting agenda is as follows. Uh, we had an application for an exception to driveway policy uh, guidelines at 2404 William Street. The applicant was Scooter's Coffee. Uh, the request was uh, to increase the size of the driveway for uh, access, ingress, and egress. Uh, the vote was eight in favor, no one uh, in opposition, and no one in stay. Uh, the next item on the agenda was the R&D subdivision record plat that is located at 2601 and 2605 Gardenia Lane. The plat combined two lots into to form one new lot for the, for the homeowner. Eight voted in favor, none in opposition, and no one abstained. Uh, the next item on the agenda was DNK stock subdivision record plat. Uh, that uh, involved an address at 10 Bienville Avenue, 
The plat also combined two lots to form one uh, for the homeowner, and the vote there was eight in favor, none in opposition, and no one abstained. Uh, subject to staff's comments being successfully addressed. And the final item on the agenda was the, I don't know if you pronounce it, Lyle Mac or Little Mac East Third Subdivision Record Plat. That is located on LaSalle Avenue. Uh, the plat creates a new multifamily development with 16 townhouse lots and one common ground lot. So the vote there was eight in favor, none in opposition, and no one abstained, subject to the staff's comments being successfully addressed. And that concluded the uh, items at the last key meeting. Okay, any questions for the staff? All right, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Appreciate it. The last uh, meeting we uh, mentioned the fact that uh, in order for uh, City Council to consider submission of the use tax to the voters of City of Cape Girardeau, we had a certain timeline we had to, to go by. And uh, we elected to have that discussion this evening at this meeting uh, just to get your ideas and comments. So I'm open to anybody's comments. I think that this is something that I would like to see occur on one of the next two election cycles, whether or not it's, I think we've missed the vote obviously on August, if we can get on the November ballot, I think it'd be very prescient for us to do so. Uh, and, and just for the, the public's sake, you know, this is the Wayfair Supreme Court decision. This is, allows the state of Missouri and the municipalities to collect online sales tax. So it levels the playing fields for our local employers who are currently battling it out and the Americans are shopping online more and more often and it's it's hurting the bottom line of the in, in local companies and employers that give to our schools the local companies and employers that put their logo on the back of a soccer team t-shirt and we, we've got to level this playing field and I'd like to see it come on the ballot sooner rather than later when we brought this up before you mentioned that there was a possible with MML, more of an orchestrated effort or timeline? Has there been any more conversation of that or anything? Maybe? I have uh, not heard anything from MML. We don't have to do this until our second meeting in July, on July 19th. I do know that uh, in talking to the city administrator in Scott City, they, are, they want to do it in November also. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Jackson may also do it in November. Uh, not heard for sure yet, but uh, there are many, many entities around the state who want to do this as soon as we can. In November will probably be the first election. In August just got here too quick. Uh, I I don't look at this. It's always been mis misnamed in my mind as use tax. It's an internet tax. It's a it's a tax for items that people buy when they shop online, and everybody shops online for something at one time or another, and. Uh, it levels the playing field, like Nan said, with our local merchants. Uh, and like Scott said before, uh, you've got companies like Amazon, the richest company in the world, who is just getting richer and richer, and they deliver thousands and thousands and thousands of packages in Cape Girardeau using our streets. Uh, if they have a package stolen, our police department has to come respond to that. Uh, it's about time that our citizens not continue to pay that money to Amazon, but at least make it a level playing field for our local merchants and pay that sales tax. Uh, it's, the county has that tax, uh, and it's, it's skyrocketed with COVID. The last I saw it was up 40% over last year. Uh, more and more people with, with the COVID pandemic are shopping online for all sorts of things. And it's just, it's gonna increase, and it is. It's slowly doing this. And uh, we have been really lucky through uh, this pandemic in that being a regional hub, people came to our city and shopped. They came to Lowe's, they came to Menards, they, came, they, just, they did all these remodeling projects because they weren't going anywhere. They weren't going on vacation. 
and the sales tax went up and we kept if it was going to go down. But that's past us now, and we're kind of getting back to some sense of normalcy. So uh, we're going to we're going to lose that, <coughs> and we're going to get back to the, the level where our taxes just level off as continue to go down. Uh, we've got to face it, and and uh, our merchants uh, need that playing field level with everybody else, and I too am one to put on about it. You know, the one thing that I would add, and all three of you make phenomenal points, but the one thing that I keep looking at is that it is getting tougher and tougher for us to find employees for the city of Gate. I sent you all an email about, I saw Penny, and, 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 and how hard it is to find part-timers. And giving 1% increases to our employees, city employees, is not going to continue to work over the next 10 years. And unfortunately, since I've been on council, there have been some years where we couldn't give anything. And sales tax is our number one piece, and this will go directly into the general revenue. And general revenue funds increases to our city employees, it funds fire, and it funds police. And we've got to get our residents behind this. And it's an internet sales tax that we must do for our employees and for the reasons that you guys discussed. I mean, I, I completely agree. Just to, that's the point I was going to make is that it becomes harder and harder to have a balanced budget with all of the goods and services that we want the government of the city of Victoria to provide. And so if we still want to have those services, yeah, we're going to have to find a way to capture that because, and I would argue with anybody, this is not a new tax. I mean, I'm as fiscally conservative yeah. as they come. It's not a new tax. People have changed their shopping behavior to buy the same items that now don't have a tax on it. And so now it gives an advantage to the online retailers and our local bricks and mortar that that money would come back for our services if we don't get to capture well, it anymore. Well, so, in some cases, we're paying, when you buy something online, you're paying that, that tax. It's just the fact that we're not right. capturing it at the local level. It doesn't come back to us. It goes yeah. into the pockets of those retailers. But I, I to go back to the original question, I think the sooner the better. I have said it before, but I think it's vitally important we do it kind of orchestrated with the other municipalities around us that also need to pass it. That way it's a shared messaging and it gets some of this convoluted messaging from the past out with a clear message so people understand fully what it is and eliminate some of that confusion. And the more that we have a consolidated effort with the Scott Cities and the Jacksons and the other municipalities, these people work together, you know, they have their kids play on ball teams together, they're all talking, and if they're all talking the same language, it's more likely to pass. I think that's something that the mayor and I can have a conversation with that we're actually have Magnet tomorrow in Scott City and Jackson or and both chamber directors will be in that room. I think that's definitely something that we need to discuss. Going back to what Dan said sooner and later, I think November is, is when we would want to push for it. Okay. My, my only, and I don't want to disagree with anything, because I'm totally supportive of what everybody's saying. Um, uh, I just want to throw out, speaking of hey, what you were bringing up and Robbie, um, the, the concerted effort of the message. Um, has there been any talk, Mayor, that you know of, of, of actually forming a committee or of individuals taking, the, I, I taking the helm? Not that I've heard of, but I think that will, that will have to happen. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess that's my point I was getting at. I, I, I think I, it, not to break, it's, I think it's the same thing like when we did TTF or when we do PRS 2 or 1. I think we need I think well, that, 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 there was a, an official committee. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, yeah. I believe that needs to be the same right. thing. Right. I don't. Right. I guess my. You want to leave that up? I do not. But I'm super supportive. <laughs> but this is so. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've been saying this. Like, this is so important to our community. Right. So important that it needs all of the expertise that we have from whatever any entities within our communities to really create that catchy, simple, consistent messaging behind it. Yeah. Did, did we, does, ML, does the passage, does it say exactly what 
the language has to be on the ballot? Yes, it does. Yeah, the state statute is very clear, obvious, the, the language that has to be on the ballot. <clears throat> it is called a use tax. It cannot be called an internet tax. Okay. Yeah. Well, and that, I mean, that, that issue alone yeah. might need some yeah. sharp focus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's where your message has to be clarity. Right. right. Can, can you add the in parentheses? That's what I said. sales tax? You know, the, the most that has been done with, with cities over the last number of years is to add some language that says in an attempt to eliminate the uh, the, uh, the current sales tax advantage that out-of-state sellers have over in-state uh, merchants. That kind of language, but the statute language has to be followed. Be and followed. if it isn't followed, then the, then the tax could be to, to Stacy's point, though, just like in messaging on any of the other taxes that we really like, there's been committees formed um, and then funds raised and then messaging. I think those are two different two different pieces, so to speak. Yeah. I definitely think that there's a campaign that could be out there that we need to to get some some of our allies as far as the city aspect and to help us with that messaging, and then at least they will be educated enough that when they go in and it still says use tax, they know exactly what that means. And possibly some way to reference the state law that was passed that is the, why this is on the ballot now, because now we have yeah. state law that was passed through the last state you need to have it passed. And, they, and, it the and all of those things can be part of the, the whole um, selling of the uh, of the proposition with the public information campaign. But the statute says the language that has to be in the ballot box. The key to the, the, key to the way fair legislation that actually is passed now changes where it's collected. So so currently they you collect use tax. You know, you are supposed to pay it voluntarily when you pay your income tax. So we currently have the use tax. Yeah. So it's so it's that's what it is. But this changes it to to have the, uh, the sellers collected and then they have these nexus and, and all of that. So that's that's the game changer that will then change and, and then you get the, the much uh, more complete collection of the tax and the return of the tax to each of the entities. So that's that's what changes with the legislation and that's what makes it so so valuable now and fair. It's fair to everyone now because of that. So I think Molly got one. Yeah, I was just gonna remind Mayor and Council members that we, we do have a precedent that when we had the census, um, we, we pooled our resources with some of our fellow communities to get the messages out. So I think that we can definitely establish the same type of uh, scenario here where we can pool our resources with all those communities that are going to have this on the ballot in November. So our, our messaging is consistent and far reaching. So I think that um, if you wanna lay the groundwork Tomorrow we can certainly have a from there. Okay. Is there some limit though to what city staff can? You're yes. saying to yes. yeah. yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, the city, is, city staff and city resources are limited to only provide information so that we, we cannot ask people to vote in a certain way or skew information to imply to, uh, to, to vote in a certain way. We can, per we can uh, Tell people about the election, give them the facts, and tell them when to vote. Uh, but we can't tell them how to vote. But it's still it's a it, it's still valuable, and it's valuable that we can that we can work together, as, uh, as Molly said. Um, but then there is that other part of the campaign, which is the, the committee part, that then can, can truly advocate uh, in the direction that uh, you choose. Which I can imagine this will be front of the priority list for all of the area chambers that could possibly carry the torch too with some of that as well. So yes. I think you're right. Okay. Anybody else? Any other comments? Uh, so do you want us to prepare a um I would prepare an ordinance for next meeting? We can prepare it for next meeting. <coughs> Appearances this evening for any items not on the agenda. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, 
for those of you who don't know, Patrick Scott Johnson so far this semester is there. It's been a while. I have some things blind so I had to kind of reevaluate some things. Congratulations, man. Um, just wanted to bring an awareness to the city that uh, I don't know if you saw the story here that's on the news. That uh, since you last saw me, we were a part of the uh, a, a, a R Corps grant uh, rule opioid response team over about uh, 29 different counties from Madison down to Mississippi, I believe it is. I'm actually the chaplain of the Southeast Missouri Recovery Association over like 59 different counties. And so I've been working with Mission Missouri and bringing different things into our city. Our new address is at uh, 23 South Central Street Road. Um, we teamed up with uh, service masters and uh, KFC Construction Group and uh, Southeast Management and Solutions. So we now have uh, some townhouse duplex apartments down on the south side of Cape. Um, we are just about ready to finish those. They will be fully furnished, transitional housing, coming with cases management and different programs out of that. We actually have a waiting list for it. It will have it. Uh, sort of like an HOA concept to it, no, no tolerance. This is a standard, raising standard of living in the Southside community. We will have um, surveillance cameras on the uh, on the homes, like no tolerance. Um, I want to say to the chief and the police department here, I stand with them regardless of who don't. I don't have time for all that negative stuff. Um, and all of our first responders. So um, we eliminate that. Don't talk, don't tell. Here, here's the camera, here's what happened. It's just that simple. Because as you were saying, piggybacking off what you were saying, get into a, 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 a mindset of, you have to have people that really want to see change. And unfortunately, a lot of the opposition comes from the people that you're trying to bring the change to. But it's never gonna stop, it never has, never will. You know, either you want it or you don't. If you don't, we deal with the ones that do. And so, uh, I'm tired of going to funerals. I'm tired of seeing people get killed. I'm tired of getting phone calls in the middle of the night from people getting shot. It's crazy, man. I've been in the city all my life, almost 52 years, and 53 years in July. You couldn't have told me our city would turn into this, but I love my city. I'm standing up for it, but I have to fight by myself. I believe in it. And so being said, uh, even with all that, this housing is a, a rapid response grant that uh, came about uh, with the COVID and all of that. And so I'm here just to say to all of you as a council and everybody in this room and anybody who lives in the city, no man is an island. And I don't have to be out front on anything. And so this is an invitation. There, It's not about Soulful Artist Ministries and Pastor Scott Johnson and my wife. This is about us as a community, as a city. My goal is for Cape to be known as a hub of change. And I tell people, if I say anything wrong, or don't do it right, don't talk about me, just educate me so I know what to do in the near future. But I say to the entire council, if, if you guys want to be a part of this, the entire city, it's just as simple as just letting us know that we can all work together. This is about us. This is not just about the South Side community. There's murder and violence and crime happening all over our city. I live out on Sherwood Drive and my neighbors have been overwhelmingly uh, responsive to the fact that I put out donations for the, uh, we need furniture and things like that, and bedding for the property, American mattress has been awesome. Like, and so it, it's happening so fast, it's like, oh, you know, thank you, Lord. Um, I just wanted to bring that to the awareness that there is a lot going on behind the scenes that you all didn't know about. We're still out here doing, doing what we do, trying to do the best that we can to make a difference for our entire community. So. If you guys want to know more about it, if you want, I need volunteers. Uh, we're actually getting people trained because out of our services, I'm a, a licensed Missouri recovery support provider. We offer that service and counseling and mental health counseling. And we are officially opening up a, a, a Soulful Harvest Ministries a Community Outreach Center out at a six, a six, 623 South Silver Springs Road. So we just about got that ready. I got to get the computers and some other stuff put in there tomorrow. And so that's going to be moving pretty fast, but it's for our, our entire city as a whole. We, we, we're trying to work with everybody and anybody that no talk, no, no negativity, none of that. I've had enough of that, enough of that. So we're doing our part to 
take a stand against everything that is negative in our city. So I just wanted to bring that to God's attention. And uh, if you need his day or know more about it, get in touch with him. He has a phone number. Hmm? He has a phone number. Phone number. You don't give it out. Oh, okay. No, my, my phone number is our ministry number. It's 573-225-8097. Twenty-four hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Thank you. Just want to pass that off. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, Scott, I don't know if you uh, have a chance yet, but we do have a registration program for cameras. If you're willing to register, uh, the police department uh, will uh, have them pre-registered. So if you have a, if you have a situation where you need to use the, the cameras, it, it makes it a little easier. So Absolutely. I know we have a registration program. That's what we have to do. I swear yeah. something about that. Thank you for your money. No problem. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Thank you, Scott. Yes. Anybody else? But any items not on the agenda? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Mrs. Deja Bailey. My husband and I are members at Southeastern Blue State University. I'm a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Um, my family has been in Tallahassee, Florida for the last four plus years, and we find ourselves back here as we're in our summer home. Um, we have a property on Green Street. Um, I called some of our great councilmen and our honorable mayor. Um, I do appreciate everything that the city has been doing thus far and after you've been away. As I come back to the city, I find myself with three little ones in tow. All of them are under four, and I do see some beautiful things that the city has been incorporating and bringing in as we try to bring our families back from our good um, middle course type people here in our city. Um, but I also see that there's a poverty problem and I want to find myself interjected in the community and participate however I can so we can move our people to bring our great military town back. Um, my, my, my grandfather, um, a Muslim man, as I am a Muslim woman, I am a Muslim family, I find myself pulling my hijab up of the great hat he used to wear that was the valley. But um, <laughs> uh, he was, um, may he rest in peace, um, a, big, uh, a, a Vietnam vet. So I'm a proud American and I'm proud to put an American flag at our mosque in Mexico here. So we are represented there. Um, I'm a little nervous. It was easier in front of the children to do this <laughs> than it is now. Um, but I just, I just want to commend all of you folks and thank you for everything that you've done in the last 12 years. I was a student then, I had a little bit of uh, fun, but now in retrospect, now that I'm a mother, um, I do see where I can participate in my great democracy. And um, I, would, I came in under the great Dr. Dobbins, I call him great because I'm a recipient of the President's Spirit Award, as well as the River Campus has been a, a, a safe haven, a, a peaceful place that I can go with my family just with everything. Um, so um, I do commend uh, our community leader as, as, as we try to move our community as well. But I, I apologize as I can call him maybe one time as I try to kind of get our, our, our community, well, my neighborhood back where it needs to be. Um, I will then, um, I'm gonna learn the ropes, of, of course, I know my place in the world of men. But I'm going to learn the ropes and see if I can on some committees or what have you, and kind of show my children how to participate in the democracy and make sure we're present as we move forward. Um, like I said, we're here for the summer to see how the city is. Tallahassee was a, a great city, but it was more black and white, and I'm more of a middle school type of person. So I, I'm looking at our military town and seeing me. I, I great the police department. I know they probably met me. I, I, I came and, and introduced myself. As not only does he think he's a car ranger, but he thinks he's a policeman. <laughs> um, but other than that, I just wanted to introduce myself. My husband and I are tag teaming, so he'll be at the next meeting as he's at home with the children today. But I'll be, um, I'll be at home the next meeting, and he'll be here. So you can both just meet us, and that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna take my seat and thank everyone for being here. Um, this is Bailey. I'm kind of old school in that regard, but. Thank you for being our city daughter. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Yes. Anybody else? To appear before the council for items not on the agenda. If 
not, we'll move into agenda review. Scott? Okay, we have uh, no public meeting, uh, no public hearings tonight. Um, uh, on our consent agenda, we have the second and third readings of uh, last uh, last meeting's uh, ordinances. We have the second and third reading of the uh, Federal Subdivision Number One um, uh, food pantry in that area. Uh, there on Frederick Street. Um, then we have Number Three is the uh, Chapter Twenty Five. This is the one that has a storm stormwater management facilities where we have. Um, made the change that we've been talking about for some time with developers and everyone about we're going to start uh, having developers put in the deed uh, when we have an easement for uh, detention basins and stormwater things. So this is a pretty good change and so we've been talking about it and talking about it. So this is the, the last uh, action is the second third reading tonight. That's um, something we work together with uh, um, DNR on the MS4 permit, which, um, which we have to renew. Uh, number four is the second reading of the state court automation surcharge. This was a uh, mandate from the state to uh, add this surcharge to our court funds. Uh, number five is the consolidation grant agreement for a planning grant. Uh, this is for our MPO. Uh, we do this yearly. And um, second third reading of that. Number six is the um, uh, capital expenditures for the mural painting on the wall uh, as you changed it uh, last time to with $50,800 or up to $52,800 for the mural. Uh, but that number will be reduced by any grants or other uh, raising of funds that they do prior to the completion of the mural. Um, then we have number seven, which is the annexing of land up at 3920 Bloomfield Road for the Canes. Uh, number uh, eight and nine is, is also from that annexation that extends the boundaries of Ward 6 and then zones it as R1. Number 10 will be uh, the agreement with Farm Barter Concreters uh, to avoid that concrete tree repair work. Number 11 is the uh, license and vendor agreement for Old Town Cape for banners and holiday decorations. Uh, this wipes out all previous agreements and replaces it with one uh, master agreement for that as we now start into Sp Spanish Street and up the uh, steps there. So uh, that, that completes that. Uh, 12 is a resolution for the uh, <coughs> acknowledgement of receiving annexation, annexation petition for JMD uh, Industries out on uh, Route K. And then 13 is the approval of the naming or request application for the Cape Rock Water Plant Turning Room. This is in, in honor of uh, uh, Mr. Kevin Priester. I think maybe his family is here tonight and, and uh, so glad you're here. And, um, and Kevin's just loving the city and all he gave to the city. And this is just a small token that uh, we can do to recognize him. And, uh, there is going to be a formal presentation uh, later on, I think in the fall, where we're going to celebrate 30 years of partnership with Alliance and we do it at that time. And so thank you so much uh, for being here and, and uh, just know how much we, we care and love Kevin and, uh, and your whole family and the dedication of them. We all like with anything, it's not just the worker, it's, it, you know, it, when we got a call out, it's uh, the family that's left behind that has to fix everything. So thank you for for your part in that. Um, that's the consent agenda. Are there any items that uh, you'd like to move from the consent agenda, Council? No, I was just going to say I looked out and it looked like three Kevin Feasters. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> looking at the same face looking back. I was just like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just showed, you know, it just showed the power of genetic learning. All of you guys, have, even like your body language throughout this entire meeting, has all been the same. <laughs> so it's been really hilarious to watch, actually, from this point. Of view. I know. It tells you how much Kevin impacted our lives. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, we do have three uh, new ordinances tonight. We have a temporary construction easement <coughs> or authority to get temporary construction easement right away. 
from various property uh, along the new Independence Street project. Um, first reading of that ordinance, and then we have um, first reading of a special tax bill to collect monies from the demolition and nuisance um, abatements from 529 South Benton Street under uh, Chapter 7, Chapter 13. And then uh, 16 is the record plat for RV uh, subdivision. This is, they um, made mention of it earlier, uh, the planning zoning has it ahead. It's combines two, at the end of that, uh, of that street, there's two, uh, usually two houses there. They tore one house down and they combined the two lots together. Um, then you have uh, the appointment uh, to appointments. You have the appointment for the Board of Appeals. And uh, that just had one candidate, um, uh, Mr. Geringer, and uh, then uh, the Public uh, Library Board of Directors. I believe you have your uh, preferences there uh, to reappoint those members. And uh, then we will have a uh, short closed session tonight. Mayor. Okay. Thank you, sir. At this point, we will move into the radio session and have the call to order. Roll call. Hop Hop. Here. Hobby Gnarch. Here. Stacy Kinder. Here. Kelly Moore of NASA. Ben Preston. Here. Ray Thomas. Here. Ben Preston. Here. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Shannon. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Can you pull it? Motion carries. Uh, we have no public hearing this evening. Are there any individuals here who wish to make comments for any item that is listed on the agenda this evening? Okay. If that's not the case, then we'll move right into the consent agenda. Harry? Number 21-86, in order to approve the record plan for subdivision number one, in order to approve the record plan for subdivision number one, number 21-87, in order to chapter 25 of the code ordinances, to keep the road with regarding school water management facilities, in order to chapter 25 of the code ordinances, to keep the road with regarding school water management facilities. Number 21-88, in order to stand chapter 16 of the code ordinances, to keep the road with regarding the state court automation surcharge, in order to stand chapter 16 of the code ordinances, Regarding the state court automation surcharge, number 21 89, the ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a transportation planning consolidated grant agreement with Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for Southeast Metropolitan Planning Organization expenses in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. The ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a transportation planning consolidated grant agreement with Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for Southeast Metropolitan Planning Organization expenses in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. Number 21-90, in order to incorporate the Central Capital Expenditure for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2021, in the state of Missouri, in order to incorporate the Central Capital Expenditure for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2021, in the state of Missouri. Number 21-91, in order to annex new land into the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new land into the city limits of the state of Missouri, located at 3920 Bloomfield Road, upon the request of Justin A. Kane and Terry A. Kane, in order to annex new
Section 86, resolution acknowledging receipt of an invitation petition from JMB Industries, Inc. for property located at 530 County Road 317 and setting a public hearing regarding the proposed annexation. <coughs> You have before you the consent agenda, and there is item 13 the approval of the naming of the fresh application for the Cape Cod Water Campaign. Uh, you all are here. You have before you the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Robbie, second by Dan. Any discussion? I can think of no finer thing than to name that after Kevin. I, I think I, I can't remember when I met Kevin. Love talking to him. Always had a good chuckle with him. Very hard worker. Out whenever no one else wanted to be out. Always at the front of the line, never at the back of the line. And uh, we should all be very proud. He was a one of a kind. No doubt about that. You all know that already. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just for his commitment to Alliance or to the city. He was or to the his role with public works. He was his commitment to the city at large. And there's continue to hear stories about Kevin and the different things that he did. And he was quite a remarkable man. He was from Cape. Mm -hmm. And so this is a great honor for him. Yeah. He loved working with you all, too. He did. He loved the city. He didn't love to see me much, though, did he? I think so. <laughs> 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 no, 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 he was in the office. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he hated Dennis, yeah. but he liked working with us. Nobody else did. Well, anyway, we have before you the consent agenda, and if uh, no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. New ordinances, Bill number 21-97, an ordinance authorizing the acquisition of temporary construction easements and rights of way from various property owners for the Independent Street Project in the City of Cape Girl, Missouri. Second. Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Shannon. Any discussion? A long awaited project. If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 21 98, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of special tax bill for property located at 529 South Denton Street for the demolition of a dangerous building and for the abatement of a nuisance under provisions of Chapter 7 and Chapter 13 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girl, Missouri. Second. Shannon? Made. Any discussion? Another wise opportunity to get rid of the dangerous property. Just as a side note, I hope, I mean, this is good to see these efforts continue to go with the aquatic properties, but I know with Steve's retirement, I can only hope that the momentum is not lost because I know he played a big role in that also. So I hope we continue to be able to use the nuisance abatement for the aquatic property. We need to do that. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Bill number 21-99, in order to prove the record plan of R&D subdivision. Second. Motion for Dan. Second. Second for Stacy. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The motion carries. Appointments. Appointment to the Board of Appeals. Uh, Ms. Gary, Ms. Gary, I'll entertain a motion. Second. Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Nate. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Appointments to the Public Library Board of Directors. Uh, we have chosen <coughs> Stacy Doe on Lane, Cynthia Heinschmidt, and Eric Redinger. Entertain a motion? So moved. Second. Motion was made by Robbie, seconded by Dan. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Mayor, I would add on that because those were three incumbents, and, uh, and if we did have an opportunity at some point, I would recommend Jessica Hill for that. I totally agree. Okay, I will entertain a motion that we adjourn to closed session. To discuss legal action, litigation, confidential communication with legal counsel pursuant to revised section of area 610 So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those opposed say aye. 